Tonight we'll be kicking off the data science challenge. What up? What's up you guys? With the machine learning team. The machine learning team is a group of like-minded individuals on the yard. There's between 150 to 200 people who are not necessarily knowledgeable about machine learning, but are extremely motivated and curious to learn more and to kind of see how it may affect society down the road. All right, so we're all tracking what the objective is here. It's tackling. Yes, tackling, and we're trying to generate actionable, practical, and novel insights from the data. What you're seeing is real-time tracking of the precise location of every player on the field. Every year, the NFL publishes this data science challenge. They give out a bunch of data, and using this data, the goal is to come up with something that is actually helpful for NFL teams to use. That's where the big data bowl comes in. We just need a problem to solve. The first couple meetings, I think we struggled to even land on something that we even wanted to solve. The problem is there's so many variables to play with. If there is a thematic question to the series going forward in artificial intelligence, it's going to return to again and again, what problem are we trying to solve? The nature of artificial intelligence is clearly that this technology will touch everything. And that's certainly going to be true in the field of education, in higher education. We're experiencing that right now. After all, what is education? Here at the Naval Academy, it's part of an overall developmental process. Acquiring knowledge is really an important part of that for sure, but so is experience that they gain here and so are human relationships because that's how our graduates are going to go on to lead in the Navy and the Marine Corps. They're going to solve problems in teams. They're going to lead teams to solve problems more effectively. That overall development, that whole person development, that's really what we're after in this environment. I can't hear you. Yeah, I can't hear you. Hey, Matt. Over Christmas break, <laughs> we met on Zoom to work on our NFL Big Data Bowl submission. All right, gang. Thanks for meeting. We almost had paralysis by analysis. We had so many different things that we wanted to do. What other metrics could be useful for calculating the probability of where and when a tackle occurs? I'm still kind of in the like the problem exploration phase, trying to figure out, narrow, narrowing down on a problem to solve, so try to understand it better. The first couple of meetings were for narrowing down the scope of the problem. So I kind of just uh, copy and pasted their code, and then I used ChatGPT to add some, some features that I wanted. Having ChatGPT there was honestly a confidence booster. Even when we were a little lost, didn't really know where to even start with something, we just pop it in ChatGPT and boom, we have a starting point. This, I don't know, ChatGPT had us, had me encode this, and I have no idea what that means. I had ChatGPT like print out the predicted results. We had this super cool data, but at the same time, and I think one of the consequences of using AI in general too is we, we wanted to find a solution before we even had a problem. I've also been using uh, GPT 3.5 a little bit. I think the brigade sees this as something they can use to their advantage. I think it's really good as an idea generator. If you're blanking on something, a topic for an essay, for a project, there's times where that can help, and that wouldn't necessarily be considered cheating. It's just kind of getting the ball rolling with some sort of idea. There's absolutely clamps on how often you can use ChatGPT in class and what you can use it for. But I think increasingly, I think it gets a lot of midshipmen out of a, out of a hole when they don't know what to write about. Is, yeah. the, is the mission January 9 or 7? I think it's the 8th. Uh, it oh, it's the 8th. Right okay. <laughs> Without ChatGPT, there was no way we'd be able to submit anything for the Big Data Bowl. Just with the timing and everything, we were on such a time crunch. All right, so it's 10 days from today. If there's anything we know about the lives of midshipmen is that we overtask them. Uh, time is the scarcest resource. So they're constantly looking for hacks, life hacks, that save them time. And, and that is one of the great dangers associated with GPT-4 is it's the ultimate time saver. That temptation is so great in their lives that it's tough for them to walk away from that. As a midshipman, your life is just crammed. That's just the way it is. So when you've got that essay that's looming and that you have to write in the final few hours before it's due, that's a very real temptation to go to ChatGPT, some website like that, and it can crank it out for you in a matter of seconds. I'm a member of Honor Staff, and we've already seen several cases of people using ChatGPT and these, these resources to get stuff done. And 
the, the main reason people do it, I'd argue, is to save time. It, it's a huge ethical thing, and that's not unique to the Naval Academy, too. We can stay in touch uh, through the group chat. See you guys. See you guys. Yeah, have a happy new year. Our current provost and chief academic officer is Samara Firebaugh. Her undergraduate degree from Princeton University is in electrical engineering, as are her master's and PhD from MIT. Yeah, I am a professor, I but I'm also are. the academic dean and provost here. She received several teaching awards in uh, computer engineering, electrical engineering over time. She uh, went on to become the department chair of the electrical and computer engineering department, uh, eventually becoming the associate provost for academic affairs. And now in her role as provost, she's trying to bring forward and adopt some of the best practices and, and great creativity, harnessing uh, our faculty in that way. So in that way, she is the perfect person for this role. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Samara Firebaugh. I'm the academic dean and provost here at the Naval Academy. And I will say that I've got a few slides prepared, but I really love to take questions. Uh, yeah. Why don't you explain the honor code to them and how the honor code has changed with the digital age, with AI, and these things suddenly become cheat machines. Yeah, this is a great question. Generative AI is a, um, a game changer, right? And it particularly is a challenge within higher education. How have we responded here at the Naval Academy to the advent of GPT-4 uh, and use by midshipmen? That is a great question. So uh, we have uh, an ongoing group of faculty um, working towards understanding this technology and making a, an action plan for us to respond. Uh, we, we are asking now every faculty member to include in their course policy statement what their rules are going to be for how generative AI can or cannot be used in their class and to reiterate those rules with each assignment. I, I'm loath to put any firmer rules than that, that around it because I need to leave room space for our faculty to innovate and try different approaches in their classrooms. A at the same time, I need to make sure there are firm guidelines in place so that the midshipmen know what the guardrails are. Good morning, as you were. So what I've been really focusing on is trying to get everybody, uh, the midshipmen, the faculty, all of us understanding the why behind different actions. What are we trying to do in this class? What skills are we trying to develop in the students? Okay, now, given a generative AI world, if I'm trying to develop critical thinking skills, what are the best assessments to use that will develop the students' critical thinking skills? It may no longer be the term paper that we all did when we were in school. So would you say uh, there's even more reason to develop those critical thinking skills? Absolutely. So it all comes down to the development of critical thinking skills. I think the most important thing is to make sure that we all understand the why. That the students understand the why, that the faculty understand the why, that we always keep the idea of their moral and mental development at the forefront of how we approach these technologies. We ready, Mr. Reef? Mm-hmm. All up. All right, seats. Wow. All up on a Friday. That's kind of amazing. Socrates comes along. Socrates is believed to have said that education is the kindling of a flame, not the filling of a vessel. And he wants to uh, make people better. Most educators believe that to be true, but don't always build educational programming around that belief. It's Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle that really uh, stamp Western culture. At this moment, AI, especially large language models, holds great potential as an augment to declarative memory. So if you'll turn in the book to page 125. Which is the memorization of facts, figures, and events that can be recalled or declared. And what provokes the dragon in the story? This results in what is called propositional knowledge learning to know. This is all very important, especially in learning to solve well-defined problems. The question is, can you employ time-saving hacks to learn propositional knowledge more quickly and efficiently in order to get to the next and more important stage of learning, which is applied learning or applied academics? 
we had taken understanding of theory based on declarative memory and translate it into practical application, solving real problems. This is learning to do. This is how we overcome actual obstacles and solve problems, especially ill-defined problems. One, two, three, go! That is the environment in which our graduates will one day lead. Complex and ambiguous environments where the problem sets change constantly. We can and will do better in preparing them for that reality. So one of the things I really value about the Naval Academy is the dedication of everyone here to the mission to developing men and women for their careers in Naval service. And that idea of the whole person, the moral, the mental, the physical, and those ideals, they don't change. But technology brings new challenges. I really think generative AI is a disruptive technology. So there's a lot to that. We absolutely need to prepare midshipmen to understand the ways generative AI can be used, but also the limitations of when they go on to be leaders in the fleet. Because there's a lot of things that are unique about the Naval Academy and our, our Federal Service Academies. One of the most unique aspects of it is, it's often said that we hire all of our graduates. We know exactly what they're going to be doing uh, after graduation. They're going to serve as leaders of the Navy and Marine Corps. Does that give us some type of special responsibility? Are we held accountable for things that perhaps other universities aren't? Well, well absolutely. I feel like uh, it's a wonderful advantage, but it means that you have to have a higher standard. If you know that every single person you're touching, you're gonna hire, then you, know, you, you have to hold them to the standards that, that you wanna bring into the services, right? Very high standards. And that also goes back to the importance of this holistic educational model we have here. Because uh, I'm, it, it's not just about, it's important, but it's not just about teaching them chemistry and physics and engineering and uh, government and history. All these topics we teach are only a part of it. We are also teaching them how to be leaders, how to integrate all together, how to work in relationships, how to inspire, that transcends the knowledge in each of these areas. Generative AI might help to increase knowledge, but it, 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 you need the people in the loop for the transcendence to become a leader. I think it's really good as an idea generator. If you're blanking on something, a topic for an essay, for a project, there's times where that can help, and that wouldn't necessarily be considered cheating. So the first step of the creative process is idea generation. As uh, Midshipman Ryman says, it can get you out of the hole, but that's just the beginning of the process. Somewhere along the line, human judgment comes into play. I had ChatGPT like print out the predicted results. A classic case of this gone wrong is a recent experience that Google had with its Gemini artificial intelligence product. All right, renewed concerns today around Alphabet's AI model, Gemini, as more controversies mount around the chatbot's inaccurate responses and image generation features. Some are now calling for a change in leadership. Google's parent company, Alphabet, has lost $70 billion in market value after woke AI chatbot disaster. Uh, yeah. Why don't you explain the honor code to them and how the honor code has changed with the digital age, with AI, and these things suddenly become cheat machines? Yeah, this is a great question. That is a great question. The way he frames that is a really great question, but it illustrates a larger point about generative AI in this moment. People have a tendency to boil it down to one extreme or another, and to boil down the challenge at the front end that this is simply going to be a machine for cheating is to ignore all the possibilities. We need to be aware of the perils associated with generative AI, but we also need to embrace the possibilities. Generative AI might help to increase knowledge, 
but it, 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 you need the people in the loop for the transcendence right. to become a leader. Now we started this conversation asking what is education, especially here at the Naval Academy. And we came to the agreement that it is in part acquiring knowledge. But it's also about experiences, making sense of that knowledge. And it's also about human relationships. This little clip is a classic example of how those human relationships inspire so much. Ritual is important to the educational process, especially in the full development of leaders to serve the nation. In the end, we found ourselves looking at the educational process holistically. It's information, but it's also experience and relationships. We know that AI is gonna solve part of the challenge associated with this holistic development, but it's not gonna solve the entire challenge. As we go forward, we have to ensure that we capture those portions that can only come from building important human relationships.